Godot basics. One of the biggest things to come with Godot 4 is support for first class functions, meaning that functions now have a class to represent them, the callable class, and can be treated like most other objects, allowing them to be stored in a variable, passed as an argument to other functions, returned by other functions, and so on. This of course led to many changes and new features, so let's start by taking a look at the callable class and its methods, beginning with the three that allow you to actually call them, first of whom being the ever so basic call method, which, as one would expect, calls the callable passing along any given argument. To go with that, there is call v, which is effectively the same as the previous function, but takes all arguments you want to pass along together in a single array rather than individually. And following that is the final call variant, call deferred, which takes arguments individually like the regular call method, but instead of calling the callable normally, it will call it in deferred mode, meaning said callable won't actually be invoked until the next idle time, aka the next time the process function would be called. Before moving on, I do want to make clear that the other old ways of calling methods are still valid. Just use whatever best fits your situation. Anyway, after those methods is a group whom all create a duplicate of the callable with the arguments either bound or unbound, starting with the appropriately named bind, which returns a copy of the callable with all given arguments bound to it, though note that you can bind any number of arguments, but if you bind more arguments than the callable is designed for, it will, of course, cause an error. And inversely, if you bind too few arguments, you'll have to pass in additional arguments normally until you hit the required amount. Be aware that said normally passed arguments take priority over those that were bound, being passed to the callable first and then followed by the bound arguments. To go with that, much like the previous method set, is bind v, which is functionally identical to bind, but takes all arguments in an array instead of individually. And then there's binds inverse. Unbind, which takes an integer as its only argument and returns a copy of the callable with that many of its arguments unbound. What this means is that when called, arguments from left to right equal to the number you've unbound will be discarded. This is used for when you have a callable that you know will be passed too many arguments when called, such as can commonly happen when a callable is connected to a signal for example, as this allows you to discard those extra arguments and not get an error. Also be aware that the bind and unbind methods aren't compatible and will override each other. Now after all those are the methods that get you information on the callable. Beginning with get bound arguments and get bound arguments count. The former returns an array containing each of the callable's bound arguments and if the callable has no bound arguments or has arguments unbound the array will be empty. And the latter returns an integer equal to the number of arguments bound to the callable. If it has unbound arguments said integer will go into the negative. Then there is another duo, get object and get object ID, whom both retrieve a reference to the object in which the callable is bound, but in different ways, with the former returning a direct reference and the latter returning an integer representing the object's instance ID. This ID is used under the hood by the inspector and script debugger and would typically only be useful to us if we are making a plugin and need an additional way to differentiate between objects. Though you can use it in conjunction with the global instance from ID function to retrieve a direct reference to the object, but at that point you're usually better off just using get object. Along with those is hash, which returns an integer representing the 32-bit value of the object containing the callable. In a similar vein following those is get method, which returns the callable's function name as a string. After that is the duo of get custom and is standard. Is custom returns true if the callable was created by either bind or unbind and false otherwise, with is standard being the inverse, returning true or false for opposite reasons. And after that is another duo of opposites, is null and is valid. If the callable is a method and the object that contained it no longer exists, is null will return true, is valid will return false, and vice versa. Alright, with that we made it all the way to the final pair of methods, RPC and RPC ID. RPC in this context means remote procedural call and is very important for online multiplayer. That said, though I know it's a bit lame, that puts them a bit outside the scope of this video. But when and if I make a video about online multiplayer, expect them to make a reappearance. Now with all that covered, we still aren't quite finished yet, as we haven't gone over the most interesting thing first class functions have brought to Godot 4, that being anonymous function, aka lambda support. These are typically nameless functions that only exist at runtime where defined. In light of that, they are defined with nearly identical syntax to regular functions, except they are put where an expression would normally be and don't require a name. You instead can just place the parentheses right after the func keyword. Once defined, a lambda can be stored in a variable or used immediately. 
All that said, I imagine there are some of you who have never used or even seen lambdas before and heard all that thinking something along the lines of, okay, that's neat, but what's the point? Which I wouldn't blame you for. After all, Godot made it this far without them. But I really want to impress upon you how useful these can be. So with that in mind, let's dive into a simple example. Let's say over the course of your script you need to iterate through several arrays and filter out certain values. The most basic way to do this is to just type up a new for and if statement each time it's needed and that works but will lead to a lot of boilerplate repeated code. So the obvious next step is to abstract that boilerplate code into its own filter method and just use that each time it's needed. And if all the arrays need to be filtered in the exact same way this basic filter method will do fine. But if you end up needing to filter the arrays in several different ways, you'll need to make a method for each, which can lead right back into having a bunch of repeating code and methods that do basically the same thing, but have to be separated due to minutia. That's where lambdas come in. By adding a callable argument to the method and using it to pass a lambda, you can now tailor each method call to filter specifically what you need. This allows you to get rid of all those extra methods and just use one that can now be flexed into filtering literally anything out of an array. And this is just one simple, contrived example. There are of course many other use cases for lambdas, so I highly recommend you experiment. Also, I think it should be noted how some of the previously covered methods work with lambdas. GetObject and GetObjectID both return references to the script in which the lambda is generated, rather than a reference to the object running said script. IsCustom and IsStandard will return true and false respectively, and GetMethod returns nothing, even if the lambda is assigned a name. And there you go, pretty much everything you need to know about callables. Hope you found it helpful, and please, if you have any feedback, let me know down in the comments below. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching.